Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Oirat Oppression in European Results 4. So I've been looking around a little bit at the map and I think, you know, we have tons of money and there's just nothing to spend it on. We have uh, no no buildings that we can do. We could do development, but I feel like getting, trying to get technology would be better. As soon as we can change our focus, I think it's time to switch over to administrative and... Um, even though I was reading online, there's some comment, like, some, some ways you can play as a horde and, like, stay a horde forever. Like, I don't really like the idea of doing that. I think, I, I think the way to play a horde is to play them really aggressively in the beginning and then reform them. Like, that's the point. That's the idea. So, um, I'm leaning towards switching to an administrative focus and then trying to knock out one of these three idea groups so we can just try to reform really early on. By reforming the government, we'll become Muslim. Um, tech group. We won't be Muslim religion. We'll still be a Tangri religion. Tangri religion's pretty boring, actually, but it's, uh, you know, you get regiment costs are cheaper. So we got that going for us, which is nice. But, um, yeah. The one thing we can build that we have, um, possible, the possibility to do is the, uh, we can build a fort up here. This is our only rival, so I think we will build a fort. It's going to only take 30 months for the first level. Apparently they, uh, they cost more and more time to build as you upgrade them or something. I don't know. 30 months seems shorter. At least in the... Okay, maybe maybe it's the difference between the, the review copy and the this actual version of the game. Because when I played it, it was 5 years. Uh, apparently it's, it's only 30 months. They cut it in half. Two and a half years. Interesting. Well, that's a good change. 5 years felt really, really long. That's as long as it used to take to build a manufactory. Anyway, we're at peace. We have an army. We have um, money. We have no manpower, basically. Well, we're at about 10%, I guess. It's our mission right now. Can't choose one until June of next year. Gotcha. So, um, we're coring because we want to get those things to become accepted culture. Hopefully, Buryat will become an accepted culture. It'll actually make Buryat. Buryat. A little bit more tax and manpower from these would be nice. Uichi has declared war. It's pretty expensive technology. We have spare relations right now. I believe. I'm not actually seeing anything in here about a better relations over time penalty. That used to be in the game, but it seems to be gone. So, if we were to fabricate claims, who would we fabricate claims on? Well, our truce is up with Chagatai in 63. Chag Chagatai is a vassal under Yarkand, though, and we have no truce with Yarkand. So if we wanted to get to war with Chagatai, we could right now, by declaring war on Yarkand. We'd end up at war with Kazan and Baluchistan. If we have that fort there, then I'm not really worried about Kazan, because they can't just, they can't get by. They have to siege the fort. Unless I'm crazy, I'm pretty sure that's going to be how it works. They march here, and then they, they're stuck. They have to go back to the fort. Um, they seem to work well in the patch, so... If we were to attack Chagatai, or Chagatai Yarkand, we could take... Um, they've converted it to Sunni. It's all the wrong religion. We're so, un we're so religiously unstable that I feel like attacking more Sunni territory would be a bad idea. We don't have any gold mines, do we? No, we can see gold here and here. It's a couple of the only gold mines in the area. But well, we have one of them. So the new thing here is that if uh, if you if you bump production of a gold mine above 10, then it can fail. I don't know if you can see that in the tooltip somewhere. I would hope so. It probably warns you when you get to 10. Still, we're already gaining inflation from it. Oh, that's unfortunate. The leader in charge. And we'll combine them in the next province so they hopefully don't suffer any attrition on their march. Actually, it looks like they're just gonna have to deal with it. There we go. That actually worked out just fine. Orissa has annexed Bastar. Horse limit. We've got room for three more troops, but we don't have any men, so... Surprised that our general hasn't died yet. 
We've stolen three forts. You're still a vassal. Korchin is still allied with our ally. What used to be our ally. Why, why did you stop being my ally again? I'm confused by that. I never did really figure that out. Did they break the alliance because I didn't give them a province or something? You are a vassal underneath Kam. Kam is tech 3. So we got two tech level advantage over Kam. Kam has got no allies. This land is culture Oirat. I would say that's probably a accepted culture. We're blessed. More of that religion. We're keeping maintenance high for at least a moment because I don't want to fight this rebellion. While we wait for the base unrest to come down, war exhaustion to come down. We'll lose a little bit of money while we do that, but I think it's worth it. What else can we do? Um, so, Uzbek, you are our rival. We need to attack you again soon. And we're going to want to humiliate you, probably. We probably want to take your best province from you as well. Just take your capital. It seems like taking your capital is, like, really good. <laughs> it's like where all of the development is, you know? You get the most benefit for having fabricated the claim. The problem is that with 18 development, it's going to be difficult to convert. Alternatively, if we take three provinces that are, that are easier to take, we'll get a fair bit of manpower. Ah, that's not even true, though, actually. You'll get just as much manpower from six as you would from two. It's just harder to convert. Hmm. Well, is there any of the land that's accepted? It's all the same culture group. I wonder if maybe we could get that to... So, cultural union. We can never just get it to accept it. It's just always going to be minus 15%. Is that how that works? Hmm. Well, we could always go to war with them and just to... Just to, to humiliate them and take their money. We don't have to take land. We do need to keep keep at war if we want to keep power projection high. Okay, it's pretty much all due to the missionary, but also the overextension and the war exhaustion. We just gotta hold tight for another year or so. Let's see, do we have any potential allies? Alright, I'm going to improve relations with you again, even though you broke our relationship. Who else hates Uzbek? No guy. Well, no guy's pretty weak, though. Kazan, are you... You can't possibly be allied with Uzbek. You must hate Uzbek. But why haven't you rivaled... Oh no, Kazan has rivaled Uzbek. Let's be friends with, Uz with uh, Kazan. We'll tag team Uzbek. It'll be great. That button scares me. Negative 4 stability just like that. Getting to positive 3 stability is going to be tough. And then going all the way down to negative 2. Save the Oirat people. That is true, they are our culture. It's the wrong religion and we can't convert it, but it's really low, so it wouldn't really contribute a lot. And we could take that territory. Do we want to fight Kazan? No, we're trying to become friends with Kazan. Fight Kazan over one little province? Probably a bad idea. Protect against Ming again. Not even possible. Just gonna have to continue to cycle him. have no relationships with anyone else at all. We're just completely isolated. We can rival Kam, Korchin, Yarkand. What's the culture like over here? Shahar. Same culture group as ours. Well, since we're not allies with you, we'd have to fight these three. Tech 3, 3, 4. So Tech 5 versus Tech 3. I think we could probably just wreck them completely. Mm. 
And then it might be easier just to vassalize them. Since we have the relations. I can actually vassalize all three of them. Maybe. No. I could take... I could probably take Yeren from Yanzo. Yanzu, but I can't take Yanzu itself. And I can't separate piece Yeren, since they're going to be a vassal in the war. But we could take... Take two of them. They are Shamanist and Vajrayana. Since it's not an accepted culture, it would make sense to just allow him to be a vassal. And it's the wrong religion as well. Although Shamanist is very easy to convert. You get a bonus to conversion speed instead of a penalty. So... Fortune and Japan. We don't want to make you a co-belligerent. Actual war score cost for you is only... Well, it's 94% actually. So if we don't make you a co-belligerent, I actually don't think we can steal him as a vassal then. If we make him a co-belligerent, we got to fight Japan. Japan has a lot of little tiny vassals, but I don't know... Would they have the ability to actually get onto land? Like, do all those little guys have transports? Let's just see. Japan has 9,000 troops of their own. But for navies, Japan itself has four transports. So maybe they could, like, filter troops over, but it's going to be a hodgepodge of little tiny armies, right? Besides, Japan's on Tech 2. But most of these guys are on Tech 2 and 3. We should just do it. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, just swoop in, siege all this stuff down. They don't even have forts, do they? You got a fort here because it's your capital, right? Yeah, fort level 1. And then same thing up here. It's your capital, it's your capital. You're not going to be a part of the war. We don't care at all about Japan, but yeah, they have no forts. So we just swoop in and just take everything. Looks like Chagatai is not going to give us our... Uh, oh, we get a claim on Lanzu. It is ripe for the taking. Except we have a truce game. Did you forget that I have a truce with Ming until 67? Well, we could bump up production, or we could do technology. I'm, I'm tempted to do production, simply because if we fall behind intentionally on, on Diplotech, and then we we reform the government later on, we'll end up in a different tech group, and we'll be able to get a huge discount on the cost overall from for buying up the technology. Plus, we'll also probably get a, a behind time bonus. So I think we probably just ignore Diplotech until, ref until we reform. So if that's the case, perhaps we should do some development with diplomacy. Pick some provinces that have good good overall production, like trade value. Can we see... Uh, economic map mode is just showing base tax, it's not showing production. So we're production map mode. Only regions, climate, winters, buildings. This got updated. Kind of. What do the colors mean? Hmm. Anyway, back to my, my initial question. Do we have any kind of... We have trade goods, but there's no, like, production map mode. So we're gonna have to use the ledger, then, kind of, to find, like, most valuable trade goods. Dyes, silk, cocoa, ivory. Dyes, coke, silk. That's just cloth. We need silk. That's the purple one. I don't think we make any of that stuff. Actually, another way we could do it is we could look at strategic goods market share. That's the percentage of it that we make. 
So, yeah, Oirat, we make 5% of the fur in the world. Is the fur worth much? Not really. This just, like, makes it easier for me to see, like, what do we make a lot of? We make Chinaware. Alright, apparently we did steal some Chinaware from somebody. Did we? Where's this Chinaware at? Well, China wears obviously made in China. We don't make any of it. So what is this showing? Is this the percentage of it that's in the... Oh, shoot, I was looking at the wrong tab. The wrong one. Production leader is what I was looking for. Shoot, there's no way to see, like, what we produce. That's a percentage. This is just, like, the, how much you have as a... Percentage of what is in the trading nodes. Damn it. Fine. Fine game. I want to just find out, do we have any damn something worth value? I'm just going to click on stuff till I find something that's worth more than 250 Three. Fine. We'll do, like, cloth. But I really just want to do manpower. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Make a salt mine. Okay, fine. Development cost is not too expensive here. It's actually quite cheap. Let's make some more salt. We can't actually even upgrade a building to get more production or something, but... This is where we make the salt. That's as far as I'm going to go. It's getting kind of expensive. But yeah, salt is made here. There we go. I don't know. I don't know if that's like the right way to do it or not. I don't really care. We're going to do just fine. You can completely, you could just completely ignore the development system and play the game just like you've always played it before and still probably do quite well. Um, we should have just suffered attrition, but we didn't because you don't suffer attrition while marching. Assuming we get out of the province before the end of the month, which it looks like we will. Yep, no attrition at all. And we have 5,000 manpower, which is probably plenty. Let's declare Tribal Feud and Co-Belligerent Jianzu. We'll make the Tribal Feud over an easy, easy province to siege, like Kahar, Kachar. We'll declare. We'll bump up tech. No reason to really do forts, I think. I don't think we need to maintain them at all. And what I want to do is find his army and kill it, so... Why don't we just march through and look for it? We should have no problems with supply. Step. Yep, he is a horde as well, right? So he's going to get a defensive bonus? That's okay. We should be just fine. Our tech advantage, morale advantage, leader advantage. Yep. We're here. Alright, let's start, um... Oh, look at that, you can even use the split button to avoid attrition. See, it's so much worse now. Alright, we got one more army there. I actually messed it up there. So what we can do is just B, 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 B. No attrition. Okay, we'll do a little bit of looting for now. Just, just totally wreck this guy's holdings. Um, we're gonna have to actually siege this one down. 
That's where all the war score is going to be. And actually, now that we've killed this army, it might make sense to go after Yeren and Yanzu. Just kind of not worry about this for now. Because like that's going to take time. Where getting 90% of his land occupied is really easy. That takes time. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to march. Nice supply. Uh, we'll finish that siege of whatever it's called. And since he has no forts, we'll just do that and then head out. Roll out. Probably need to do two armies, though. Still no real response from him. Actually, if we have like a 15 stack with the leader, he'll be only about a 10 stack. He'll be able to move pretty safely around. So let's go look for the rest of the armies out there. And again, yes, we're going to bring this army back up. We're going to ignore that siege. We'll do it eventually, but I, I mean, I want to keep the army together as much as we can. The horde is just moving on through. Do you not even have an army? Like, what's going on here? Mess that up. I gotta get used to the new way of doing things. 10th, 20th, moving to there. Let's go fight him. Actually, no, he's gonna cause problems. Let's go for him. Woods! Superior army. He's going to run away, but we can beat him. It's all infantry. I think we fight him. I'm totally fine with them going that way. Rile of armies, that's unfortunate. That fight could be going a lot better. Alright, so we're the defender this time. Negative two penalty. We got reinforcements there. That fight will probably still end up going pretty well. But we lost a lot of troops in this. Alright, let's um... Let's keep some troops here and march the rest this way. Full annexation of Kandar. Alright, well I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to continue this war. I think we're doing really well. Don't have to even worry about Japan. Apparently, apparently you weren't even able to call Japan in. Like, it didn't happen. Or did you not get co belligerent You did. Just did call them in. Alright, so this is a pretty easy war then. Alright, I'm going to take a break here though. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching everyone. See you in a bit.